Welcome to the bad boy pod, talking bad boy bars, make a good girl nuts with the bad boy swag. Having conversations that a bad boy mad, sit down, relax, kick back, have a blast, enjoy the bad boy pod. To you, my lady you should really submit that to that Insta. To do moi. You know what I should submit to Insta? Which and... you already did, I bet. <laughs> no, I haven't done that. The only one I've done is Shia. Huh? Eating salad with... Oh, I didn't tell you that I submitted <laughs> Shia eating salad with his hands. <laughs> That's so old, though. How could you submit that now? I That's said like... it was in 2015. Okay. I mean, it's fine. I think it still stands. You're right. I guess did you read all the ones? Did you problem. read the ones today about Zach Braff? No, I am okay, still so... not caught up in the news. Since Jewish laser news, which we'll speak about oh, later, yeah, I just yeah, like yeah. have not opened Twitter. I'm like, fuck everybody. I no. Well, this was on Dumas. Sick of the this jokes. was on Dumas Instagram. What? No, I did not say that. Okay, so there was like a series of ones about Zach Braff and how I guess like fans will come up to him and his eyes will go wide and he'll get like really scared and run away. And the person who runs the account was like, "We get this all the time about Zach Braff." That he's really weird and like runs away. What the? F okay, weird. <laughs> What's know. going on with Zach? What's going on with Zach Braff? <laughs> um, so I is think he the one? Like, who, is he the one dating? Um, oh, Florence Pugh. Yeah, I don't know why I know that. See, that's just like unfortunate thing about my brain. Because everyone hates the relationship. <laughs> And that's right. whatever. And we must have talked about it. Is it's she young? obviously for people to decide on the internet? I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's she, definitely young. She's a youngie she's, bungie. But she's a youngie bungie. And you know who else recently got into a youngie bungie? Who? Um, Nick Vile, the former Bachelor. Remember him? He was extremely boring. <laughs> uh, yes. That doesn't go really down. <laughs> so he's almost forty, and he's he's in a Ooh. youngie bung with a twenty-year-old-ish. Okay. Good for a, them. That's a classic young Ebung. 40 year old a, famous person, 20 year old model. That's classic. And that's I wish classic. them the best. I wish for the best personally. <laughs> I wish for I the really... best. He can, whatever, he can fuck off if you're, if you're asking me. Yeah, we are and... very late. We are very late to the Dumas party. I feel like it really took off <laughs> over the summer. Like there was like a New York Times profile about her. How did we miss it? I don't know. Probably because uh, there's just been so much other news. <laughs> I guess you're right. There has been quite a few things going on in the world that maybe like mundane celebrity gossip was right on our mind. But you're if right. the listener doesn't know about Dumois, it's this Instagram account. Um, they're private, which is weird, but they'll accept you if you add them. Um, I guess it's not weird. They just want to keep track of maybe like the Perez Hiltons who follow them, I feel, or like Probably any like right. cele actual celebrity who follows them. You're probably um, right. And if yeah. they see any suspicious people with like zero followers, they're probably just like, mm, I don't know. You have zero right. followers. That might be a little bit of a tip off for me. Right, right, right. Tip alert. Um, so people submit like blind, they're called blinds, um, like anonymous tips about celebrities and they're unsubstantiated. But like some of them end up being true. Like they said, you know, that they knew that Halsey was pregnant before she announced it. Mazel tov to her. Who gives a shit? But a lot of it is just like extremely mundane. Like I saw Chris Pine once and he ordered a hot chocolate, like very lame shit. But for some reason, you tell it's... me what to do and I'm going to listen. Absolutely. Ugh, that voice. Don't you miss it? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Do you forget about him sometimes? I just don't. Yeah. I mean, so many atrocities, but just like, honestly, since he's been ripped off Twitter, it's like, Oh, he was completely expunged. I yeah, I don't really think about him that much. Um, except that he like met with the minority leader of the house, Kevin McCarthy, recently, and I saw a picture of him. And that was like <laughs> really like seeing an ex. Ooh, yucky. Yeah. I don't yeah. like that at all. Um, he's just at Mar a Lago doing it up. Oh, I'm sure he's just I don't know. He's so stupid, man. He just he's having a great time because he is dumb and just yeah. doesn't let any bad thought enter his mind whatsoever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, he's already mm -hmm. forgotten his presidency, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, the rest of us can't. How do you <laughs> feel about when people talk about like we have collective PTSD from the Trump era? I mean, sure. I think so in a way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just in just Culturally. like this. Culturally, I think that we all just disbelieve the government even more right. than usual or right. at a standard. <laughs>
but it we need a different world word for it because PTSD feels like a little extra. It, it does feel like an oversimplification of it. Right, right. Um, and people do actually have PTSD. And <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like people like the people who are working at the Capitol that day definitely have PTSD. Yeah. Oh, God, man. What a but just a liberal a... who existed in Trump's America. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's nuts that that's the standard right now. And I mean, the Dodger Stadium thing this weekend. <laughs> we oh, were on a lovely walk. I had no idea what was going on until I saw your text. And like, yeah. all these people were just texting about it. And it was like, and they, this yeah. Is so basically, a group of anti vaxxers descended upon Dodger Stadium. And by a group, I mean, there were like 20 people. Um, and they were just protesting <laughs> the existence of vaccines in general. And like, Dodger Stadium is the biggest vaccine portal in the fucking country and they really shut it down they've really applied more pressure to less pressing things but um yeah it's really it was fucked up. i mean just like you're the fucking police you'll do obscene things to protesters doing literally nothing and then the these anti-vaxxers come up and disrupt vaccines that you're already fucking up up the wazoo just get them the fuck out of there yeah, and yeah, I, I really can't believe just how <laughs> passive they are with these people, <sighs> considering God. they are so just easy to crack skulls and truly shoot people. So it, they will you know? truly <laughs> crack a skull. No thing. Um. Anyway, this is our 100th episode. <laughs> Can you believe it? My name yes. is Zoe Klar, and I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Julia Davidovich, and each week is a blessing. Um, I, you know what? I'm proud of us. It's you. Ooh. Me too. We really have come so far from the Jeff Bezos days, which is episode one. La, 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 la. Um, Honestly, really, <laughs> we really set up our mics every weekend, don't we? Every single weekend, we set up our mics, we do a chatterama, we discuss uh, the bad boy of the week, and then we move on with our lives and do it again <laughs> next week. But it is simply a joy. It's Here's, a joy. Jerry's I like really straight hear up knocking. making, he's <laughs> making gumbo. Oh boy. Yeah. It's something so, you cannot enjoy. <laughs> he actually, after I guilt tripped him extremely hard, he is now making a vegetarian <laughs> option. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> hey, look, you know, perfect girlfriends. I, I, first of all, Zoe. I am a wife. Mm. Show some respect. Honestly, I feel like there's a six month oh. grace period. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, you're but, right. Not, I, I do not give a shit. <laughs> but, um, but you're right. You are a wife. I'm a and wife. you know what? Your what? husband is a wife guy. <laughs> he, he fucking better be. Um, but if so your he's making. Not a wife guy. Leave him. <laughs> right but he's making you veggie gumbo which is beautiful yes. zoe i love it amore. is it is beautiful zoe it is amore um and i'll let you know the by you i mean the audience know next week how it is i'm even gonna write it in on this blank page who's the bad boy gonna be who fucking knows i'm gonna who write knows? gumbo update <laughs> um so before we go into our bad boys do you want to do a quick bad boy update Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> well, first of all, Mike Lindell, our bad boy from last week, did get banned from Twitter like the next Incredible. day after we recorded. Um, wow. <laughs> so shout out to him. I feel great. I feel like perfect. Yeah, that's because he slept on a my pillow. Um, so shout out to him. And other bad boy update: Leah Wicked drop. OJ Simpson got the vaccine. I cannot believe it. I really can't believe they gave it to him. What does he even fall under? <laughs> That's a like, good question. Is he 65? Yeah. Oh my God. He's literally 73. <laughs> He's 73 it. years old. Does that, I don't think not everyone over 65 has gotten vaccinated yet. No way. My mom got the first one. Hmm. Yeah. Call your moms. Yeah. Um, she actually felt sick afterwards. So oh, sick alert. A few people have. Yeah, yeah. I know I just know I'm gonna feel sick. I'm not about to storm Dodger Stadium over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I mean, isn't that good? Yeah. Like I don't uh, oh, Jesus. Anyway, I like, hope OJ Simpson feels the... like shit. 
<laughs> me too. If anyone should be experiencing symptoms, I think it really should be him. It really should be him. Um, so Ugh. send your bad vibes that way. Who are your bad boys this week? I really am racking my brain. I had definitely have some neck pain this week and some head pain, but like LA rain, baby. I think it's just fucking oh, yeah. with my body. I feel like my, my dad... wrist is acting up again. Uh oh. Are we all having pains um, and aches and pains from um, rain weather? Rain weather, whatever. Yeah, I what guess I so. Send your send your aches and pains to Diane. So my bad boy is sort of a remix on my good boy from last week. Did you see that Jenny's ice cream came out with an everything bagel flavor? <laughs> yeah, didn't and you it send says, it to me? Probably. It says like <laughs> chunks of garlic, and it's like no, 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 no. We do this is way too far. Honestly, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, I could get behind that. That's fine. I mean, make That's a fine. sweetie beady. Um, yeah. Like, but I like, love the taste of toasted sesame. Put it on ice cream. I wouldn't, I don't think that sounds bad, but garlic and onion? No, I don't, no. I don't think we need that. Jenny's, don't try to, Jenny's, don't do that to me. Jenny's, it feels like a hate crime, not going to lie. Um, Honestly, it is attack, an attack on the Jewish people. It is. And it's cream not cheese frosting. See, I love that, but like, leave the rest out of it. I don't want that. I don't want I mean, a sweet garlic, my friend. I don't want a sweet garlic, my friend. <laughs> Just please don't put that in my mouth. You know what their best is, though? What? Um. Oh, I miss it. The uh, goat cherry and cheese. Goat. Mm? I think you mean goat cheese and cherry. What did I say? Goat cherry you and cheese. <laughs> you mm. said goat cherry <laughs> and cheese. I would really like a goat cherry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is she? It took me a second where I was like, maybe that's what they call it. I don't know. There is nothing worse on the planet than, than mispronouncing things or rearranging <laughs> words. I realized um, I was calling, what is it? And I mean, it's our bad boy this week. I feel, oh. I forget what I was calling. I mean, there are like 13 words for it, but I was like I using the word forever. Anyway, well, whatever. I was like, shit. I was like practicing saying it like A E I O U, like doing mouth stretches. Anyway, we're going to fuck it up. Um, <laughs> we're going to fuck it up. Was that like the quickest first section ever? Or like not really? Because we talked about the most random shit. I mean, we kind of did. I think we'll. I definitely want to talk about Jewish lasers later. Because, <laughs> oh, yeah. I sure. mean, I we can was. talk about that now. Well, I was reminded by the 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 Paris doc today. Nikki oh. Hilton is, is she to a Rothschild? Oh, She's Jewish Nikki. space lasers! Jewish space lasers, <laughs> lasers! I couldn't believe the like quasi anti-Semitic shit that was going on. Just like, That's just fully. like, what did you think was going to happen? So, what Jews put the lasers up there? Is that what I she's saying? I couldn't really bring myself to read past what like mm. that person was saying. I was just like, Marjorie I'm not even gonna... Taylor Green. Yeah, we have a straight up conspiracy theorist in Congress, like not even hiding. Like she verbally berated one of the Parkland shooting survivors, like chased him down the street and berated him. A fucking child who was the victim, who was in the built in a school shooting. He's the survivor of a school shooting. And you're going to, oh God, Ruthless. I mean, they just really like just it. think it's fake, which is like, I don't understand. I'm laughing because I'm frustrated. Yeah. I have no Look, idea. <laughs> evergreen, evergreen statement. Evergreen statement. But true insanity. Like, how does that even? I guess. I guess that's what happens when you like have your own news network. Incredible. Yeah. So shout out to Fox News. They're doing God's work. Um, she's probably not going to be expelled from Congress, though. No, probably not. I, okay. Yeah. Amazing. I think At least we can we're look in forward to on more. That. Rothschild um, conspiracies. Oh yeah, cannot wait to see what else the Jews are gonna do. Um, okay, so for episode one hundred, we had a couple, um, you know, a couple thoughts. Of course, Julia really wanted to do a Hitler Donald Trump blitz. Um, that was a fully that was fully a joke. I, I was don't like, think you thought it was a joke for two days. For literally two days, I was like, "How am I gonna say I'm scared of the hate we're gonna get if we do that?" But you were kidding. Uh, so that's good. I was good. kidding. They're the same person. They're literally the same person. Oh, a full reincarnate Barney with them too. Reincarnate Barney. I love that. Yeah. It's my oh, certainly. Did you watch Barney growing up? I did. I did. I was more of a Sesame Street walker. 
definitely watch that too. We also had our Canadian version called Sesame Park. Sorry, Ooh, everyone. What's Shout out to our baby on that? Did they <laughs> with Sesame Park? Was it the same characters? No, they had um. A, you had your own. I, what was he like? A, uh, a polar bear. He was a polar bear named, named Basil. I have is, a picture is, with him. Are, I'll put that in the center. What? <laughs> <laughs> you met Basil? It's lovely. I met Basil um, at like the CBC open house. My mom dragged that's me there. Incredible news. Beautiful news. Um beautiful news. Was he like the Elmo? Like the main character? Yeah, I'd say he was kind of an Elmo. I'll <laughs> I'll have to do a real deep dive on Sesame Park. I barely remember it because like um, let's be honest. The American are there polar bears better. in Canada? Oh yeah. Like at the tippity top? I mean do near Alaska? Bit. Yeah, Air Alaska in Air Alaska's plains, <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also like near Alaska, as close as Manitoba. Because I mean, the the ice caps, baby, those are melting. Right, right. Wow. So they're they're wild polar bears in Canada. I guess that makes sense. I just never thought about it. There are some cool pictures of them like touching their noses up to public buses and stuff, and people are like, "Wow, they're wow. so cool." Yeah. <laughs> well, because you imagine them floating away on a fucking ice cap, not like in I mean, a city. I don't want to watch them die. Go float no. away on an ice cap is what I'm saying. My name is Zoe Clark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't I don't want them to float away on an ice cap, but that is the pick. Yeah, it really is. And I hate thinking about the polar bears. <laughs> I, I do too. And I also bears. hate when they're I hate when they're dirty. Like muddy. Oh, I don't want to think about those sad polar bears. <laughs> okay. I mean I think I think polar bears got muddy before global warming, but call me crazy. Um okay, so You know gonna... what I hate? Those dogs with those like <laughs> bleeding oh, looking red... eyes. <laughs> Bleed... Like red eye disease. Bloody bloody eye dogs. Um... Yeah, I always think about like being in a pet store, you know, when I had my six month stint at PetSmart. They had of this course. like shit called an angel eyes or something for it. <laughs> Like, oh, and it like cleans it up. Sounds like an appropriate product. I'll I see if I can why, find it. Why are their eye boogers red? Yeah, oxidation. Email Diane. Oxidization. Email Diane. Email Diane because she has the same condition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're not doing uh, Donald Trump uh, Hitler blitz. Um, we're going to talk about Britney Spears' conservatorship, and then we're going to go on some tangents. Yeah, like a billion tangents. So that's the we, plan. <laughs> I watched two depressing documentaries today, one of which so, I've already seen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot believe you rewatched it. It was like so. It was so long. Um, it's anyway, a depressy Bessie. It's a depressy Bessie, and we'll get into it. But so tomorrow, I guess there's a documentary coming out about it called "Framing Britney," and it's coming out on FX and Hulu. Um, and it's like produced by the New York Times, so it's gonna be accurate. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> um, and it's all about her conservatorship, which I really don't know that much about if I'm being Frankfurt. Um, but I'm learning. Oh, sorry so, for burping. It's okay. Um, so I feel like out of respect for Brittany, um, we should you should just guess her Instagram following. Mm. Are you a follower too? I'm a follower, yeah. How can you not? She has a um, great Instagram. She does. She really does, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say 20 million. I don't know. 27.2. Oh boy. Okay. She deserves okay. more. So, yeah. Yeah. She puts out that good content, though. She has amazing very, content. Some of it's consistent. I mean, we'll get into it, but like, okay. Ah, yeah. I don't know. It's Do you believe be the Britney's grammar or whatever? What were you gonna oh, say? oh, you weren't gonna say any conspiracy connies about it. No, I mean, we can get into the conspiracy connies later, I guess. Um, okay, great. So, quick definish. Um, a conservatorship is when a judge appoints a person or organization to care for an adult who cannot care for themselves. Um, but the definition varies from state to state. And there's also something called a guardianship, which in some states is exactly what... In a conservatorship is in California, but in states where there are guardianships and conservatorships, conservatorships are more about managing the finances and the estate, whereas guardianships are more about um, managing the person's health care and like whether they go into assisted living and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. 
So that's just like the Webster's Webster's moment. Uh, just thought I'd throw it out there because it's really Webster's confusing. Momo. Yeah, it is just a very, quick, very confusing. Just a quick Webby Momo. Um, Mary, they call me Miriam Webster. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So Brittany's conservatorship started in 2008 when she had her moment. Right. Which, like, honestly, by 2021 times would just be called a tantrum, I'm sure. Yeah. A she blip. was really, like, completely different than Monica Lewinsky. But I kind of, the way that she was made fun of and, like, victimized for it reminds me of what happened with Monica Lewinsky because it's like she was like late night fodder you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and this was someone who like has been I mean her entire childhood like didn't exist like give her like a fucking break leave her alone leave Britney alone it is kind of it's a huge leave Britney alone and like not that I give a shit about celebrities because when have I I don't have encyclopedic knowledge of literally anyone. It's hard for me. Like, I don't, I can't care enough about a single person on earth. (laughs) What? Like, that's true. That's true. It's just like, that is true. So, like, (laughs) why? And, but at the core of it, I don't think anyone, like, should be treated like like that, like a a husk to be made Mm -hmm. money from. It's gross. Right. Right. It's very gross. So you'll maybe remember in 2008, she was seen like driving around with her kid on her lap. Um, She attacked a photographer's car with an umbrella and she also shaved her head. And that was like, you know, that fucking moment. Um, I watched a YouTube video that was probably produced by a 13 year old about this. And they were talking about how um, like when you look at earlier videos of Britney singing, she has this like low kind of sultry voice. Um, But then like the, her producers and music management made her put on this like baby voice Mm -hmm. and that like carried over into interviews and so at one point in her difficult time she was like randomly using a british accent and this 13 year old youtuber said in voiceover like this was like a fighting back against how they made her speak in this other voice or something um man but you think about like how often hate to be this bitch but like how Mm -hmm. often men attack paparazzi and how often like men do wild ass shit like more erratic than what Britney did and will not get the same treatment whatsoever. Yeah, it's hate to be a feminist. (laughs) It's true though. It is like such a double standard. Like, uh, but yeah, it's always, it's just hysteria and women. And for men, it's just, you know, their masculinity. It's like Bibarama. Like when Bibarama was like, he went through the same exact thing. Like, and he was not he was really felt bad for in a way that she was not yeah it's true it's and you know rewarded and everything else and i mean this isn't an exact parallel but the janet Mm -hmm. jackson justin i was thinking about that too and just how she was i mean any woman at the i watched the paris hilton documentary same fucking thing same fucking thing the fact that that was put out without her consent Oh, yeah, it's so scary. It's so scary and sad. I, and when we were we were growing up in that time and we completely bought into it, you know, it was like Paris Hilton's a fucking slut. Britney Spears is crazy. Like, that's what we believed <sighs> in that moment. And it's so it, it's fucked up. I mean, ugh, I really hate it. I, I it's like that all internalized misogyny bullshit. That it just is. like it was perpetuated and it's so sad and it's so regretful and it's so like i ugh, it's so sad yeah yeah it's so sad that so many people like steeped in this and like learned from it and just like perez hilton was truly he's <laughs> such a, a pioneer in it but like oh, tmc he's such a pioneer any of these <laughs> these weird outlets that people just like made it i mean here's the thing mm-hmm. I, I get that people rebel sure everybody rebels but imagine mm-hmm. rebelling with money i can't i can't I even can't. imagine having um, access to money and rebelling but on top of that still being a kid it, the rules still apply yeah and it's just 
Ugh. Um, so in sure 2008, are, oh, sorry. I mean, sure, they're a kid, but it's like still, you're a paparazzi literal adult putting you I know, know. them I know. on the internet and, and like shaming them. So who's yeah. actually the crook? I mean, <laughs> she like was the, like, she was like almost 30 at this point. Brittany mm, was. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Well, I'm but, thinking of Paris. Oh, yeah, Paris, definitely. Ugh, God, I'm, yeah. Um, and you know, like when they were photographed, like getting out of the cars, like Lindsay Lohan with her crotch hanging out, it's like, what do you fucking expect when you're taking a picture from below the car? Like these people are hiding under a car and then like someone steps over them and they're like, oh my God, their pussy's flying all over the fucking place. Like, what do you think is going to happen? I don't, I do not remember. Like uh, the golden age of pussy shot, like that. So weird that that was a thing. Yeah. It's just like. like <laughs> They were taking up skirts. Of course you were going to see their fucking crotch. It was, And it was all the time when they were getting out of a car. Like, That's so nuts. First of all, you had to wear a miniskirt then if you were a celebrity because that was fucking sick. Show I mean, off those legs, trend. girl. Um, I don't know. It's, yeah, punishing women for being women. But um, yeah, I mean, what it. else is new? So in 2008, um, she was put... She was she went to a psych hospital twice, and that's when her father Jamie was given given a temporary emergency conservatorship, um, so he could make decisions about her estate, her health, her, and her business, um, and who she could see was also a part of it. Um, so that was in two thousand eight, and I, you know the reasons for her going into a conservatorship then, I can envision why a judge would say okay to that. Mm -hmm. um even though i don't know the depths of the situation and she probably just needed i mean i don't i i still think it was done out of manipulation and probably not for the best reasons but i can see how given how she was shown in the public eye that a judge may be like oh yeah this bitch cray because that's what everyone was saying right and like the way that she was groomed in that industry too Awful. Between 2009 and 2019, the conservatorship keeps getting extended in the courts. So what was originally a temporary conservatorship because she was going through this difficult time. Also, her dad's name is Jamie and her mom's name is Lynn and her sister's name is Jamie Lynn. And I'm Jamie Lynn. not <laughs> okay with that. It's It bothers me. It makes me cringe just to this it, very second. It makes me cringe this exact second. Um, yeah. not okay. So, yeah. but in that time, like she put out an album, she had her residency in Vegas. She put out all these perfumes. She had a lingerie launch. Like she's working, you know what I mean? But it's like, right. At the same time, Other she has no agency in her life. Yeah. And certainly people are profiting off of her and just like <laughs> yeah, profiting off keeping her on whatever they consider the straight and narrow to be, right. which is, I think, essentially locking her up. Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, her dad just has complete control over every aspect of her life, like down to who she sees and the lawyers she hires and like, yeah. So in, but in those 10 years, she's working and the conservatorship keeps getting extended. And her dad is doing everything in his fucking power to keep these records private. Um, and like, she's working, you know? It just yeah. seems like if someone's able to work, it, it they should still be able to make their own, fin I mean, not even financial decisions like that. They can even hire their own financial advisor. I don't think they should be under the thumb of like- They can't hire, they can't- Conservatorship. She can she can't hire her own financial advisor, though, exactly. because her dad is fucking controlling who she can hire. Which makes no sense because she's obviously capable of mind, like yes. in just like body and mind, if she's able to work, if they allow her to work, which is like the key thing. If you're the big cash cow for your family and you're quote unquote allowed to work, it's just like you're right. Allowed <laughs> or are you like forcing it to happen? You know what I mean? It feels like forced feels like and then forced. not allowed to make your own decisions. I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, I can't speak on Brittany and whether yeah. or not she wants to perform or not, but I'm sure she yeah just like to literally be yourself yeah yeah it must be, it would be nice um so in 2019 um her dad jamie was accused of physically abusing her son who was 14 um and stepped down of being like the primary conservator and now it's she's like 
Now the primary conservator is this person who's like been Britney's long term caregiver. Um, mm-hmm. But I guess her dad is still like kind of in control. Right. It's really confusing. It is. It is confusing. And then there's that. Andrew We're doing Wallet. our best. <laughs> yeah. At this point, it seems that her family is divided in the issue. Like, obviously, her dad wants to keep power. It's pretty clear that Brittany wants out of this. And Brittany's brother has recently spoken out about it. And, like, no one really talks about it. It's been super hush-hush. But in last summer, in the summer of 2020, I guess, like, some stuff came out about it. Like, some documents were made public. And so people were talking about it a little bit more. And her brother basically said... um, that they support her leaving the conservatorship, even though her dad is still fighting to maintain it. Mm, yeah. It's still just kind of seem more like more family shit, just like that. He's kind of like a, a mouthpiece for like the right, family members right. who don't necessarily want to address it, but he's still like, uh, he knows what's good for the family, let's say, right? I think, or believes he thinks he knows what's best for her, which is just, you know, I think more of other people making decisions for her. And like, even, can you imagine your brother <laughs> being like speaking on your behalf? Absolutely do not comment on my life. No, if my brother of all people, no. I cannot, I would not. I but would she, at the same time, she can't, shit. she can't say anything. Mm -mm. so and like here's where her instagram comes in i guess because so many people and i don't want to call them conspiracy theorists they are a little bit though i you know sure yeah (laughs) but like and i don't believe most of them because it's hard the free britney movement started in 2009 which is like pretty much immediately after her conservatorship began um but it kind of resurfaced in 2019 because a podcast called britney's Graham did an episode where they talked to a lawyer who was part of the firm that oversaw britney's conservatorship and basically like expressing concerns for her dad britney's dad running her life um so Hmm. we'll post a we'll post a link to that episode in the in the description just so you can i don't know learn some more stuff if you're interested then well it's an interesting podcast i feel like i've listened to most of the episodes they haven't made episodes in a while and i forget a lot of it because well and and the two comedians who run it are um barbara gray and tess barker and they're actually in the documentary that's coming out tomorrow i'm getting my heat pad sorry do you sit on it no it's on my it's on my old ass pretzel back because i slip the shape of a pretzel oh right you should just sleep on your back do you need a new I mean, pillow? I mean, I'll tell myself, I'll tell my sleeping self that. Do you need a nicer, like a fancy pillow? Like a my pillow? Just kidding. I feel like I need a coupon. Do you know where I can find one? <laughs> I bet you can find one off his uh, incredible Instagram account. Not plugging it. Don't follow it. Oh my God. I haven't do you played think, that in a while. Do you think Tila but... Tequila has a my pillow? They're definitely running the same circles. I honestly think so. Yes. Looks like you're not sleeping oh, well. So true, Mike. So true. Um, so, I feel like, oh, what? Yeah, she just to reply. She definitely has a my pillow. There's okay, no yeah. chance. No, she does not. Yeah. Um, how's your mattress? Does it suck? Um, I like my personal mattress at home, but this one's like, eh, it's okay. There's like a topper on top. Of, I was gonna topper on top. <laughs> I was gonna ask if there was a topper on top because those do help. Is it like a foamy topper? It's a real foaming at the mouth there. <laughs> okay, that's nice. That's nice. <laughs> um, that's a good cuddle. We have a um, tuft and needle. Ooh, a tuft and needs. A tuft and needs. Um, you know, classic <laughs> Maddie in a box. Um, no, no one <laughs> Take puts, a look inside. No one puts Maddie in a box. Anyway, um, so Brittany's not performing right now. And the- I see. Absolutely. And the most recent update is in December 2020, her conservatorship was extended until September 2021. Um, So Brittany does not want to be in this conservatorship. She wants the hearings to be public. And her lawyer has said publicly that Brittany is scared of her father. Um, So it should be interesting what happens after this documentary comes out. Yeah. I mean, it's so kooky that it's not enough for the person to just like first display competency i don't want this 
and say, I don't want this. It's like, I, I, I don't get it. It's just such a money, just like obvious money gramp and right. just like such a devious bullshit um, way for people to make money. Like these are the landlords of elder abuse or, they really are. <laughs> or like people abuse. Right. And she did have another mental health moment in 2019, I think, where she was hospitalized again. Um, a couple of months after that, she basically said that her dad made her go. So if they're trying to use that, like she went to that mental health facility as proof that she could not take care of herself or whatever. I mean, you know, it's just, fucked. it seems like intimidation and just like obvious control. Right. It's so stupid. It's so, just, it's honestly, who would not have a breakdown if your family was like this? I completely agree and concur. Um, so definitely watch the documentary when it comes out. I will be. It sounds it sounds like it should be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely watch it. This yeah. is I've been I I don't know. Some of the conspiracy theories got me interesting. Do you know? Oh, of course. They Sometimes did. you're just kind of like I I like. Do, do you think her boyfriend's like for real? Her boyfriend, or do you think what that he's like a spy or something? Yeah. Um. I mean. I don't know. That's very scary. Imagine. She definitely had to be like cleared by, he definitely had to be like cleared by her father or something, but I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but like even imagine that. I don't know. I can't. What a, what a, in just everything. She's almost, Every. she's 39 years old. She's a grown ass woman. It's horrible. Um, there are plenty of 39 year olds who are like, the most irresponsible yeah and i mean she has like 15 she has kids with fucking k-fed i mean she's spending so much money on lawyers to fight this conservatorship she is spending millions on child support to k-fed she has 30 percent custody of her kids and he has 70 percent and it's just like the most unfortunate situation um uh, because like she's fucking britney she's an icon baby one more time it's so fucked up. I don't know. When adults treat their like kids like true children when they're in their 30s, it's just so strange. It's all just so controlling. Are Ugh. you following the like Claudia Conway stuff at all? Kind of. Kind of. What do you think? The last thing I saw was just like, I don't know, her mom being a true kooky bookie. Yeah, her mom is a monster. Uh, so yeah. Claudia Conway is the daughter of... Kellyanne Conway and George Conway and she was posting on TikTok and I saw these as she was posting them but basically recordings she did of Kellyanne screaming at her and like verbally <laughs> abusing her for real um, and then those videos disappeared and she posted this like you know very straightforward like my parents have never abused me um, like everything I posted before wasn't true. It's, they seem coerced, or at least that's what the theory is that like, and she's tried to like emancipate herself, but you know, she is a minor still. So it's different from the Britney situation in that Claudia is not bringing in the money for the family and she's a minor, but there's right. still clearly like a weird abuse going on and it's very public and it's weird how like, she'll post these TikToks, take them down and post this complete opposite one. And all the comments are like, she's fucked. Like, how, how can we get her out of here? I mean, yeah, it's kind of like, how can you get her out of there? Ugh, God. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Imagine, I mean, the last thing I saw before that kind of thing, because I think I caught a little bit of it, um, was like uh, when her dad left. Like, I think it was after... The, no when was it i think it was after the election her like dad just like straight up left and she was posting about it yeah and like saying i'm selling all this stuff and <laughs> just yeah. like but and just like oh what else was she saying saying like oh you're tweeting but you're ignoring my texts and stuff just like really kind of exposing your family it was just like i yeah. mean what else can you literally do when your family's true shit i don't know it's really um anyway so yeah, we could let's talk about this uh, freaking sad ass documentary you made me watch. That's tangentially related. No, it is related. Um, <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. So the documentary is called The Guardians. I think you've actually talked about it on the pod before. Maybe before. when you watched it the first time. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely heard about it on um, Brittany's Graham's podcast. So 
Oh, they talk about because it, it's like the same. I I mean, okay, fine. It's the same vibe. It's the same vibe. So the documentary talks about in Vegas how there's basically a system by which like people will assume guardianship over elderly people, put them into a facility, like an assisted living facility, um, take control of their assets, and then they basically then they die. And like their families are left out of the entire thing. Like they basically bankrupt old people, take their money. And it's like fine because the courts are all in on it. Is the gist of the documentary? It, it's really sad. It's just like it's it's unbelievable that it actually happens. Yeah. Like and that there's no barriers. And I don't know. It just it doesn't make sense. They straight up kidnap these older. I mean, they're old. They're they, old. But they're, they're chosen you know. based on how much money they have and how old they are. Like, how close are you to dying so that I can steal your fucking car and get away with it? Yeah, and they basically gaslight them into thinking that, or not, I mean, they do, actually. They do, like, yeah. Their spouses and stuff into thinking that they're incapable of taking care of themselves, and they scare them into either going to, saying they're going to send them to jail right. or an institution. They have two choices, or if they want to come to the assisted li living facility alone. Right. You know? Well, I mean, it's like, it's they've been married what? for 40 <laughs> years, and it's like, we will separate you, and one of you will go to jail, or you can come with us willingly and give us your house key. Yeah. And then on top of it, they're in control of their finances. So, yeah. you know, when they need a new pair of sweatpants, they will charge their estate $180 for the, you know, $24 pair of sweatpants they bought. Yeah. On oh my behalf God. of that person. That fucking like, woman. Shit like that. Yeah. I will say Is this. She in jail though. now? <laughs> yes. That, so at the end, I mean, spoiler alert, I mean, this happened in 2019, but there was, there, one of the guardians uh, was arrested for, basically racketeering and a bunch of like money shit because that's like the only way they're going to get these people i guess um because i guess right. like straight up kidnapping old people is fine but whatever um right. or like mail fraud catch them on mail fraud because these people would redirect their mail which is right. a federal charge legally the guardians have to inform their the people they're going to um they're wards is what they're called. Like the people who the guardians oversee are called wards. So they have to inform them that they are going to be a ward. Uh, but they'll change their forwarding address before they send anything so that they never get notified. And so these people literally come to their house. They say they're there from the court. They say they're going to be arrested. Like these people are like 85. So maybe they're not like intellectually 100. I'll say it, you know, like, they're old, but they're fully capable of taking care of themselves. Sure. They've got their auto payments set up. They're fine. They're fucking susceptible to this, though, you know, um, and that's the whole point. It's such a disgusting, like deplorable money grab for like, uh, I, I, I like, how could you do that kind of work? Did you watch that trailer? Oh, fuck. No, I forgot to watch the trailer. Should we watch it here? Sure. Is it I care a lot? Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think that's yes. what it is. Okay, Oof. you're right. I found it. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Good morning, Miss Peterson. I'm sorry to disturb you so early. The court has ruled that you require assistance in taking care of yourself. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm afraid it's not up to you to decide. The court has appointed me to be your legal This guardian. is actually a pretty good summary of what goes on. You have to come yeah. with me. <laughs> and remember. Freaky. I'm here to help. My name is Marla Grayson. I'm just someone who cares. I don't like that she's hot. Marla Grayson, you've had amazing success. Stunning haircut. What's the secret? There is no secret, Peter. She forces them into the home, auctions off their house, and uses the proceeds to pay herself. Because caring is my job. Sit! I will grab your dick and balls, and I will rip them clean off. Probably not far from the truth. Right. I know what you do here. Your hustle. Oh yeah, he's on it. <laughs> What's his face from the Mindy Project? He's hot. There Danny, we go. Danny Castellano from the Mindy Project. But Jennifer Peterson. He's a hottie with a body. She's he really funny. is. She has very powerful friends who can make life uncomfortable. For she you. really scares me. How uncomfortable are we talking? I mean, why? Oh yeah, Peter Dinklage. Very, very alert. <laughs> 
I like Peter. Tony just met me. There's two types of people in this world. Predators and prey. I'll watch it. I don't lose. It's like I won't lose. This vape is so much. The vape. We're gonna put this vape in Wilmer. This is, it's because incredible. It's the biggest vape I've ever seen. It's. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I mean, I see what you're but saying. Like, it is a After little watching that I know deep documentary and like realizing that that woman that went to jail spoiler alert go oh, yeah. you know fast forward 30 seconds if you don't want to hear this um they found like 30 urns in a storage facility yeah like clearly you're a piece of shit yeah I mean I <sighs> I'll I don't know I don't know I'm I'm I have a hard time <sighs> I don't know what if it's good <laughs> I like what if it's good? What if it's like a triumph for, you know, people fighting guardians everywhere? Or right. what if it's just like not, who knows? What if it's glamorizing it? I don't know. Right. Don't That's know. what I'm saying. I don't like that she's hot and it very much has the energy of like an Ocean's Eleven heist movie or something. Which is pretty gross considering yeah, like there are people separated from their spouses every day and family and just right. like they spin it as a story that these people just want their inheritance. And it's like, they I don't know. I mean, yeah. maybe there are some people that want their fucking inheritance. But you know, know what? They maybe deserve it more than this random court appointed guardian. Like if you deal with your parent oh, your entire life. Yeah. You've earned that fucking money. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Zoe Clark. And it's true. it's true. It just is. That's that's you know, getting paid to do to do work. It's just what's right. Um, oh, that scene of the 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 i think it was the daughter and the granddaughter painting their um oh my god face. they were painting oh, they were painting a um i guess their grandmother who had died they were like doing painting her nails and doing her hair because they couldn't afford um like the mortuary to do it because these guardians, the guardians had yeah they had taken all their <sighs> fucking money buying gasoline at $88 a gallon you know what I mean it's insanity and they're fucking they're, yeah. the courts were all up in it they were doing it they m must have been getting money I don't know it's a fucking mind fuck but yeah I, I, ugh, it's so gross so did you finish the Paris doc no I actually I'm I'm, I'm it was getting pretty it was pretty getting intense. to the stuff it was getting to the stuff. It was getting to the like um, kidnapping stuff. Right. So when I was watching this, it was like, there's this moment where they kidnap the old people out of their homes. And it very much reminded me of in the Paris Hilton documentary, when she is being taken to a residential treatment center for crazy kids. And I went to one of those. So I was like, I got to watch this shit. Um, mm. They mm. will straight up kidnap you and take you to this school or this place i mean i i was not kidnapped but i know that basically what happens is these large men who, who come into the house they take you out of bed you it's always in the middle of the night and they're screaming and screaming and your parents are just like watching you get dragged out like the last it's, thing you uh, see is your parent like watching you get dragged out of your house by these fucking strangers and you have no idea what's going on. And it's such a weird, I mean, as someone who went to one of these schools and like knew people that that had happened to and like my experience for the record was nothing like what Paris went through. Like she was very much abused at her school. I was not. Although at the time I thought it was like mm -hmm. the fucking worst thing ever. Um, now, like so many stories have come out about how much abuse there is there. Like there was clear financial stuff. Like these programs are extremely expensive. And so they want to keep you in the school, even if you're okay, you know? And like the principal of the school was like driving around. She had her own, she had a, her, a personalized golf cart that she drove around the campus in. That just sounds like a 
just a no that's a that's a warden her, and her name was karen yeah she had big warden energy um Jesus christ yeah but like people are like forced again this is not my experience this is just like there have been a bunch of articles that have come out about other schools like punishing people when they come out um definitely like sexual abuse by the faculty is super common um and what happened to Paris is more like physical abuse. Like she was locked in a room, kind of like she was like put in solitary confinement, essentially. Um, and you're like, she's like a 17 year old girl who parties. You know what I mean? Um, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't, <laughs> it add doesn't up. make any sense. I just don't believe in that kind of, um, you know, whatever they're called. Like what, what do they, they call it what rehabilitation, but I in, mean, in, I think it's just a scare tactic. For I, children. I was called. emotional growth boarding school. It, it, which no just, that's like how they've brand themselves is like an emotional yeah, okay. growth boarding school a, a, a program for troubled youth whereas like yeah. in a lot of cases <laughs> you go there you cannot leave until you're 18 you talk to your family once a week it's guarded like you you can never talk to them like alone so if you're in a situation where you're getting abused like it is impossible to talk about it. And they will convince you and, to keep your kid there because they need that money because it's fucking expensive. And worth noting that like rich white people go there and brown kids go to jail and juvie. And it's, yeah, it, it that's another thing where it's like in the moment you don't think about like as a 13 year old, I wasn't looking around being like, oh, everybody's white. Yeah. But then like, you get older and you realize what I what happened to me versus what would happen to a black girl who was going through the same shit as me at 14 and where True. how like my life went and how her life would have gone you know yeah I mean it's I mean it's like cops who yeah. was picked up on cops versus you know who gets um their own episode on intervention exactly um it's so the kidnapping just reminds me of that and just the like money sucking of it all like it's such an exploitative industry and it really is i talked to someone who i went to school with um reached out to me randomly i literally haven't spoken to him in 15 years and he's like i want to get into the entertainment industry so i'm like whatever we'll talk about mm -hmm. it and he told me that one of the teachers um was on an episode of wife swap where and i watched what? it <laughs> i don't know why one i did that teachers one of well he was an administrator oh I was when on you? an episode okay. okay yeah he was on an episode of wife swap he was a stay-at-home dad and he was the wife in the swap he changed wife swap know. forever okay um Pioneer. so progressive and he his whole thing was like he was the laid-back goofy dad and he got to this like super uptight home and he told all of the kids and their dad to untuck their shirts. And I remember him as being like the chief dress code enforcement officer at crazy kid school. And he would always <sighs> tell me to tuck in my fucking shirt. Oh my God. And now you're going to be chill alert. about it. Huge hypocrite. Fucking okay. Bo. I agree. I this guy. Bo, yeah, we'll put him in. We'll definitely put him in the center. Oh, we are Jesus. putting him in Wilmer, one hundred percent. I know the screen grab to pick. I mean, he put himself on trading sp spouses. He did. He did. Um, wife swap, but yeah. Wife swap. What? Yeah. <laughs> too many shows, baby. I know, way too many shows, baby. So that's my little like similar but different um thing. The kidnapping thing. It Paris was kidnapped. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. I think it's just fucking, just disgusting to abuse kids <laughs> on right. top of like thinking that that is a way to treat them. I, I don't know why. And that like, I treat trauma. I like will never sympathize with a parent who sends their kid there, but they are fucking duped into it. You know, like it's true. They are and, also I mean, being taken advantage of as much as I don't want to admit it because, like, I will. I will. I mean, you know. Well, I mean, there's not a kid in there that hasn't experienced trauma. I mean, there's no way they're acting out because they're just, their lives are perfect. It's right. just, <laughs> right. there's something there and, yeah, you know. And it's, it's like the biggest range of issues and like the, you know, it's like 
one kid is there because they're depressed and dropped out of school and another kid is there because they have like a crazy heroin problem at 16 and another kid is there because they have like early onset schizophrenia and their parents don't know what the fuck to do like but the therapy is very like cookie cutter you know it's like everyone goes to these programs we're all owned by like the same freaky corporation and <laughs> yeah it's just like it doesn't seem very personalized no it's not it's like how are these two people who are completely different in every single way getting the same treatment and then you expect it to work um i mean it doesn't work which is like also a thing but that's not really the point Ugh, god yeah. it's so sad capitalizing off angry kids <laughs> i know i know so the paris hilton documentary like it's the first time i mean i'm sure other celebrities have gone to programs like this i have no doubt in my mind but paris is the first one who's like really come forward about it um and i think you know good for good on her for doing that yeah i mean you can hate paris all you want but yeah and she was, human. she was human <laughs> she was she was very much abused there fucked up trauma she was very much yeah. abused there and she didn't tell her family about it which i can understand completely because like they put her there like as a teenager <sighs> it's... it's impossible to be like you put me in that place that did that to me i don't you know i i blame parents and i half blame parents and i don't blame parents <sighs> for some things i know it's like, like what's if, a girl you, to do? you can forgive them so, so much but yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. but we have our limits like true to think that you're helping by you know subjecting someone to that is kind of a tough right tough one to kind of not present them and for. again my situation was very flowery compared to a lot but i still am very traumatized by the experience and definitely resent my mom to this day for it i mean who can't <laughs> who can't it's impossible not to and you go there and every single person all they're talking about is how their fucking parents sent them there i know it kind of feels like you should be having that conversation if we With... have anything in common <laughs> the only really... thing we have in common is that we're fucking pissed at our parents so that's the only <laughs> thing we're going to talk about it's like it's like parents know and they just can't take it and they just needed to send them away you know it's yeah. it's too much for them to take and that's just honestly irresponsibility on the parent no offense no, I mean, none taken. I, I wasn't the parent. I didn't make that choice. Yeah, not that I'm um, a psychologist or a child psychologist, but, you know, well, I, as an angry child myself, I truly wish I had had therapy <laughs> at age 18. <laughs> it I know, I know. I mean, that needs to me. be that needs to be mandated for real. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's that's my my that's our tangent rants. <clears throat> Episode mm -hmm. 100 rants. You deserve it. <laughs> Old people and teens. Um, so my <laughs> our two greatest demographics. <laughs> oh yeah, the two of our favorite demographics. Um, We're huge with men over the age of sixty to one hundred or something. I forget what our our listenership is. Literally is. like eighty not eighty eight percent women, but in people over the age of sixty five, it's like eighty eight percent <laughs> men. Um, so shout out to those pervs. We love you. I feel great. <laughs> love um, you, pervs. All right, let's shut the door on Britney Spears's conservatorship, uh, guardianship, and my traumatic teen life. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Wow, come on, Mark. Shut the door, baby. Don't say Maybe Mark. shy, Mark. Um, is Mark under conservatorship? No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so, <laughs> think but he's... he definitely has met Britney Spears and Paris Hilton. Yeah, I think so. I think he could stand from having a little bit of control over his money, just like even letting uh, a stepbrother yeah, right. or a strange. He should brother. let the lead singer of Smash Mouth take it over. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, oh yeah, sidebar about the Guardians documentary. Um, <laughs> we texted about this, but my pet peeve is when a documentarian puts himself. It's all I was going to say, or herself, but like, let's be real. Um, puts himself in the documentary. Oh my god! I, and he got even cringier when he like self described himself as a good Jewish boy from Canada. I was like, "Oh yeah, were you were you like right. daddy?" No, just kidding. <laughs> Please. Um, I it just like you can sit behind the camera. You don't need to sit on the couch and be in frame to interview this person. Here's my devil's advy. Um, Fine, for this uh... bad boy is that he was doing he was double doo dooing doo dooing doo dooing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah as like an investigative reporter too you know that's Fine. the prob so he couldn't entirely I mean, be behind the camera unfortunately there was that there was that documentary on 
what's it called uh hbo max about the kid investigating his mom's murder oh god yeah what i do didn't like about? that documentary um, it wasn't amazing no <laughs> it was a real drag dragorama if you ask me but he was in it and it's like fine you're investigating your mom's murder but still like i mean but you know still rich kids get their mom's murdered too right you're right you're right um i guess okay fine let's move on to good boys then so my good boy this week is my new milk frother oh my god you're really just frothing at the i'm seams frothing at it. the seams over here um first of all she was so cheap she was like 14 bucks god. um from jeff bezos world.com okay <laughs> and i'm sorry but it is what it is but she will froth up oat milk like you've never seen in your fucking life and i'll put a picture of a i'll take a i'll take a selfie with her and pop it in wilms because she's a beaut she also could be a sex toy if you like pain if you Um, absolutely love getting your pussy whipped up i guess (laughs) yeah you want a pussy whip i got the i got the treat for you 14 bucks on amazon whip that pussy up whip that pussy up um, definitely don't recommend putting this thing near, <laughs> near your vagina, but I do. I have thought about it, um, not for me personally, just looking at the machine. Anyway, she'll froth up anything real nice. <laughs> My wife and I have been camming with Zoe since last August. <laughs> Leave uh, me kind alone. Of like a safe three way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should really get rid of that whole cam girl tab. Maybe just keep a few. <laughs> no, keep a few. Um, do you have any good boys this week? Yeah, I mean this one's gross, but. I want to say okay. my ingrown hair. Oh, you get her. You get her real nice. I really got her good. She really, Where was she? On my puss. <laughs> but wow, like, oh, on your pussy like, whip. On my pussy whip. It was like right That's in this, like dead center. Sorry, everyone. I mean TMI, but like dead center. It was like dead center. It was just like how like did you on get the here? on the mound. <laughs> On dead center okay. on the mound. Okay. Wow. So That's he, exactly on the pit- where it was. icy pitcher on the mound, if you will. That's exactly what it was. It was um, <laughs> That's it was a grassy knoll, and he really threw a fastball. It really just it was a fastball for sure. Uh, That's amazing. That song by? That, oh no, that is you got a fastball. fastball. <laughs> nope, <laughs> the one. <laughs> anyway, I was just realizing I was looking at myself for like the last thirty seconds. I really hate when that happens. Do you ever catch I yourself know, but... in Zoom doing that? But it's just like you oh, didn't yeah. look in the mirror before, and you're just like, "This is only why." I, I don't I it's like hard to even pay attention where my eyes go. I don't know anymore. It's really hard. It's really hard to pay attention in Zoom. Pay attention well, in I'm Zoom. I'm so happy for your pitcher's mound explosion. Um, Thank you. I think it was great. a I really think it was a double bubble. Mm, sorry oh, to say. a double bubble. Like that's a million, amazing. A million little hairs came out. So that's whatever. Um that's great. Rest um in peace. a million little hairs. <laughs> TV show. What's it called? A million <laughs> little pieces? That's about your pubes. We're going to do this for like six minutes. It's like pretty little <laughs> be- be- Pretty boops. little millions. Um, a million little okay. pieces. So this is an email that Diane got an email from uh, Potentially Perpetually Poopy. Um, mm. And it says this. Dear Di- and this really combines a lot of Diane's interests. I love Dear it. Diane, last week I got a UTI. It was gross. It hurt. I peed blood. Oh, Been no. there, sister. Oh, my God. And was put on an antibiotic. One of the side effects of the antibiotic is diarrhea that could last up to, quote, several months after stopping taking the medication. So far, so good on the diarrhea front. More like diarrhea back because of her Mm. butt. You're right. But I will keep you posted. I'm full of (laughs) jam. Obviously pounding the Activia, wearing dark colored pants and keeping my fingers crossed. Maybe your virgins can keep me in their thoughts and prayers. So that is just a message to the virgins, Diane's virgins out there. Please keep perpetually, potentially perpetually poopy in your prayers. Um, no diarrhea front here. Oh my God. I fucking, yeah. Well, I don't know if I've ever gotten the UTI diarrheas. I've only gotten one UTI, no, not, a brag, not a brag at all. Um, and you went on antibiotics? Yeah, but I definitely had to do yeah. a second round because like it was not enough. It was one of those like tele. I'm going to say unsolicited UTI advice. Go on the fucking antibiotics. Like, yeah. don't, don't chug, don't chug like 95 gallons of cranberry juice. Go on the antibiotics. God damn it. They fucking work and it burns when you piss and you can fix it because you have drugs. 
It's true. It's really a modern miracle to take antibiotics. Just take it's them. It's a thoroughly modern Millie, if you ask me. It's. I would die without them because <laughs> UTIs, literally, I never want one again. And then take one of those, Um, what are they, Jaro, what's that brand, Jaro bacteria, live bacteria pills? Because then like, you know that, what's it called? Because antibac, what is it? What's in um? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, me either now. Wait, hold on. I know. It, oh, antibiotics makes you more, what's it like? It makes your good bacteria disappear. That's what it is. Uh, so you're supposed so to then, like eat yogurt or something. Eat yogi, get your get your Activias. There's take like your some Jaro sort of supplement. There's a s supplement, Jaro. Yeah, that's the one. Well, um, get your pussy right and bacteria up in the good way. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the good bacteria in there. Also, one time I had a yeasty and I shoved a garlic up there. Did not work. Don't do that. Waste of time. And it makes your mouth taste like... <laughs> bad garlic i um, tell that to people sometimes i don't bad, necessarily bad say it's you depending on who it is but <laughs> i love that Look, story it's, it's fine well it's not my fault people are like shove a garlic up there it'll clear your yeasty right up no it doesn't it just makes your mouth taste like garlic it's fucking weird anyway <laughs> I mean the it. human the human body should die um have you ever put right. onions in your socks to get rid of your cold that's a diane tip that sounds she like a george like tip Do. <laughs> It it's really sounds like your dad. Yeah, it definitely sounds like your dad, if you ask me. Uh, George did this thing where he would definitely eat a clove of garlic and then go to bed, and the oh, whole yeah, you've told house me that. would reek of garlic. It's just like. You definitely <laughs> told me about his garlic ritual. Um, <laughs> all right, let's blow through TV talk real fast. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. TV, TV talk. talk. Blow one on through. Um, so 90 Day Fiance. Um, the 60 year old delusional woman has officially flown to Belize. She brought <laughs> so many pairs of underwear and, and watches for him to sell on the black market there. And, um, seems like things are going great. I mean, she was about to drop because she's uh, about to tell him or she did tell him that she slept with his cousin. It's... Well, they were broken up. <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> sure. I mean, she's selling Fuck someone's cousin. He first of all, his cousin definitely told him, and he you know doesn't what? care. Everyone is someone's cousin, if you think about it. When you think about it, <laughs> you fucked my cousin. You're right. I probably yeah. have, and yeah. you as well. Thank you. Um, and then Brandon and Julia, my favorite couple with the overbearing parents. I can't wait for them to move out of there. And there's a I rumor going them. on on the subreddit that they <laughs> are one doomsday preppers and two swingers. I love I love this theory so much. I really hope it's true. It makes sense well, that they're so steamed about them leaving the farm. And they're obsessed with sex. Obsessed. And it's like, wow, he looks so much his parents look very related. Speaking of cousins, I mean yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say yeah. that they're cousins, but like his he looks exactly like his mom and also his dad look exactly like his mom. They all have that That's a like that's a beautiful face. threesome. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not normal. There, and they left for that. They left for that miscellaneous random trip and never talked about where they were going. They just left for the night and came back, probably to fuck a bunch of strangers. That's what everyone is saying. Why does everyone assume they're swingers? Does anyone have proof? I want the hot the proof. tub. I mean, that's okay. That is so gross that you were like. I mean, not you, but that she was. Um, like putting her hand Brand in the hot tub and being like, it's Brandon's not clear mom was water. like, it's not clear. Why isn't it clear? And he was like, my fucking jizz, mom. He didn't say that. that was the <laughs> truth. Um, okay. The so, absolute truth. Anyway, whatever. They're gross. They're disgusting. Um, can't wait to see what happens. And then, did you watch Drag Race? Yeah, I did. Do I know um, any names yet? We'll see. No, probably not. Well, you saw Lala Ree's bag dress, bag yeah. outfit with the pink yeah. and the oh. purple. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not great. Not good. Really what enjoyed if, her performance, but not great. <laughs> uh, her lip sync was incredible, but I've She's never wonderful. seen a worse costume in my life. No. On the other hand, Utica's sleeping bag dress. I mean. That was that the most was, incredible thing I've ever seen. It was cool. She's good. It was cool. She's cool. You like her. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting more mad and mad about Rue being a fracker and, um, uh, a, turf. and a turf. Yeah, so she's I'm a upset. huge fracker and a turf. I'm, I'm very uh, conflicted on watching yeah. the show because it's like, obviously, this profits Rue, but like the gals. 
I know the gal. I mean, I'm never gonna stop. Um, never gonna give you up. I mean, I'm watching every everything. Um, anyway, she's so watching every Drag fracker Race. on television. <laughs> every t- it, name a fracker. I'm a huge fan. Um, right. That's those uh, TV talks. Is there any no new Law and Order SVU this week? Um, I think yeah. next week there's a new one though. So. Wow. I mean, what, does it take them longer to make them now because they all have to wear masks? Just kidding. Don't (laughs) want to shame you for mask wearing. (laughs) Well, Christopher (laughs) Maloney's Law and Order Organized Crime is coming I'm back interested. baby i'm excited i'm, I'm excited let's see Does him take have... down some white supremacists that's probably not what... <laughs> mm. maybe. probably more mm. mafia but <laughs> let's see them take down the russian mafia i love can't to see wait it. <laughs> um, um and then oh what i was gonna ask did they already have a first season of that show or is this their first no, season i have never this will se- be the okay. first one got it yeah interesting yep mommy's Whatever. first organized crime can't wait mommy needs tv to watch yeah, I started blown away the um, glass blowing reality show. How's she going? Ah, uh, just an eh. Yeah, I don't know. Not I wasn't blown away. <laughs> I'm not blown by away the first either. one. So no, I didn't even finish the first season. I realized when I started watching the second. So we'll see what Whatever. happens with season two. Um, that's, and those are my those like, are my TV talks. That's what I don't know. Is there any TV talks for me this week? I don't feel like I need newbies. Well. An incredible 100th episode for everyone. Um, you know, shout out to Kevin James. Shout out to Diane. <laughs> shout out to Diane's virgins. Without you, we'd still do it. Um, not Kevin, though. He's uh, he, does it he for needs the money. to be here. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> in it for the money for sure. And still silent on Black Lives Matter as far as we know. Um, so that's sad. Email Diane at badboypod.com your UTI stories, <laughs> diarrhea stories, uh, cousin art, uh, cousins Ooh, making out with cousins. You'll, we need to hear about it. Um, I mean, Diane needs to hear about it. Um, or DM Diane at badboypodcast. Um, did I say Diane at badboypod.com? <laughs> Shop. Diane, shop.diane for uh, <laughs> some shirts and mug. Uh, and absolutely give a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Five stars, baby. Yeah, I think we just got a few one stars from some Army Hammer stanzies or something. I'm oh, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to you wanna negate the Army Hammer in your life by giving us a five star rating on iTunes. Send us a screenshot. Diane will send you a pin and a personalized note. Mail. Um, USPS, of course. Yeah, she loves and- it. And... Um, is that all the stuff? Is that all the stuff for today? We love, we love Diane's virgins. Stay virgins. Yeah, forever. Please don't ever have sex. Please never <laughs> have sex. <laughs> Brought to you by Lady Parts. <laughs>